Welcome to The Hidden Truth Show and our deep dive into the transgender movement. The American Academy of Pediatrics recently issued a policy statement regarding treatment of children suffering from gender dysphoria. In that report, it recommends that healthcare providers provide gender affirming treatment for children suffering from gender dysphoria. What does gender affirming treatment mean? It means help the boy immediately transition to being a girl. Give him a new name, let him wear girls clothes, give him the drugs that he needs and surgery that he needs. Well, we talked to Dr. James Cantor, who is one of the world's most renowned sexologists. He says that the report is just dead wrong. It goes against the science. He's done a full fact checking on it. Here's an excerpt of that interview. The American Academy of Pediatricians, and they released this policy statement regarding transgender children. And you wrote a pretty scathing uh, rebuke of that. Uh, you, you did an excellent job of going through all of their citations and determining that they really don't say what they, they claim that they, they state. But let, let, let's start from uh, taking a step back as far as who is this group that put this study, this, this policy statement together? And when uh, I say group, actually, I, sh I should say not just sorry, n not just the AAP, but the actual individuals that were on this committee. And Dr. Cora Bruner is somebody that we interviewed on the show, and I believe she was one of the members of it. Yep, uh, I can answer the first question. I don't really know the answer to the second question. Uh, the first one is that the AAP is a uh, is an one of the American Medis uh, medical associations, lowercase letters. Uh, in this particular case, yeah, and they of course have the major one, the American Medical Association, and then there are various associations for each of the specialties. So people in the specialties can you know uh, uh, share the information and talk and network with each other, you know, to help themselves, you know, uh, make sure they're giving the best uh, the best care available uh, the uh, American Academy of Pediatrics is of course the group that that works with uh, uh, that works with children and that's who they are and they you know and uh, it, because it's basically impossible for any one person to keep on top of each of the very very many topics within our field their field especially we need you know these associations to kind of digest it tell us which of these are good which are bad and most uh, uh, professionals don't need to know every incremental step you know a couple of papers point in this direction a couple of papers point in that direction people with busy clinical practices need okay break this down for me because i need to see this many people you know in this amount of time i need it i need it broken down so these uh, associations often serve the purpose of, uh, of doing that. And so this policy paper is one of the many policy papers that that and other associations come, uh, come out with, uh, saying we have reviewed the scientific uh, evidence and the other relevant information, and these are our recommendations. So that was the basic idea of this particular policy statement. Uh, now, I have absolutely nothing to do with the American Medical Association, with the American Academy of, uh, uh, of Pediatrics, or any of the people uh, involved. I just know what the research literature says and what the stuff that was in this article that came out just did not jive with what I knew the contents of the scientific literature was. As I said, that was my only interest. The individual people on it, I would not be at all surprised of any composition of them, whether they range in whatever proportion of, uh, uh, of legitimate scientists, activists, activists of science, community members. I have absolutely no idea what process the uh, 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 these groups did. Uh, the only thing I do know is that this appeared to be a committee of committees, only by all the many, many different groups that were uh, uh, that were described in the back of the document. So I really couldn't tell you who these people were. From my point of view, it doesn't matter. Evidence stands on its own. If a, if a person presents me evidence, the evidence is good or bad, and I don't care who presented it. Yeah. Well, I, I ask because I do want to examine the politics of this because it appears that politics probably uh, did come into play. And, uh, you know, this theory that I have that LGBT activists are getting involved in, in pushing things in a certain direction uh, in order to reduce stigma but ignore Ignoring science, so are you, that, that are you, is 
it, it's hard to argue any other conclusion. As I say, I can't, you know, my, my my goal here is to present the facts as we know them and let people, journalists such as you, you know, take it from there. I have, you know, because I have access to the original medical material, I can do the fact checking that a journalist can't. But it's really up to, you know, now your field, now that I can pass the baton forward uh, to take it and now go figure out, you know, how, how was it that a large medical, uh, supposedly scientific based organization can do this now that's, you know, now that's no longer science. As I say, that that's now now when I pass the baton to to your group. Yeah. So we'll get into that political side in a second. I guess let's start with the basis of what they're basically contending. And it's one of the things that I started this whole deep dive on transgender movement about, which is this question about the four or five year old child comes to the parent. The boy says that he wants to be a girl, feels like a girl, et cetera. What is a parent to do? This is so critical that parents know what to do in that situation. I think that we're learning that that situation presents itself more than people even thought before. People are realizing this as it becomes to the fore. So this policy statement was really intended to help direct parents as to what to do in that circumstance, correct? Uh, that's certainly one of the explicit motivations. But as I say, committees are whole groups of people and groups of, and whenever there's a group of people, they each have their own motivations. Some I agree with, some I disagree with, some I'm ambivalent about or have mixed feelings about. Uh, so I hesitate, again, because there are so many, you know, different things that can motivate these kids or later adolescents and even later adults to want to transition. And there are so many uh, different uh, adults, whether it's, you know, parents who either are automatically affirming parents with a, a religious background who think that this is just a variant of homosexuality. I, I, I hesitate to, uh, to divide any of this discussion into uh, a simple tribal, my group, their group, everybody in this group is there for the same reason, and all the uh, the entire other team is all there for the same reason. I, I don't think that's really what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think there are many different people, each for their own purposes, are taking advantage of this situation for their own purposes. So I think there are many different angles coming at this, and some of these ang and a lot of these angles are it makes me look good as a parent if I do this, or it makes me look good as a therapist if I do this, or it makes me look good as a politician if I do this. And then, of course, on the flip side, we have the scientists saying, well, this is what makes good science, and so on and so on. So each of these people kind of have a motivation and are grabbing onto different aspects of this, really having entirely forgotten the child, but just using how does this, you know, issuing this opinion on in, uh, in this forum make me look. Now, to me, I can even understand a lot of those motivations, and I even agree with those uh, a lot of those motivations, but the science is the science. And what is what this debate is turning into is simply ignoring, dismissing, or disappearing the actual evidence when when that disagrees with one the one's politics. Not even that I necessarily disagree with those politics myself, but we can't just dismiss the facts because of it. So let's go through the three options that they identify with, which is with the the, the child that is having issues identifying with their biological sex. They suggest that there's three potential approaches. One is to try to get them to better identify with their biological sex. One is to try to get them to better identify with the sexual, with, with, with the gender identity that they're having in their head. And then the third is the watchful waiting. So is there one of those three approaches that you think is the correct approach? Uh, again, to say correct is a little bit of a value judgment. Really, all I can ever say is this is what the evidence suggests. Uh, and uh, again, as a scientist, there is always, in theory, some future point which may suggest that all the existing studies are wrong and something else is correct. That is always, you know, a possibility. But uh, because, you know, we are talking about such a uh, – because people are going to use the word correct to mean a value judgment rather than a scientific conclusion – I hesitate to use the word without uh, without a footnote. Uh, what the evidence suggests over and over and over, in fact, unanimously across every single study that ever followed these kids up, is that no matter what you do, the majority of these kids cease to want to, uh, to transition at all. By the time their sex drive kicks in, they realize that their feeling of affinity or identity or liking the things of the other sex, they realize that that's 
mostly just plain vanilla homosexuality, either, you know, pre-gay men when they're boys who without a sex drive don't really understand the nature of their crushes. The only way they have to understand that they have these more girlish kinds of desires is, oh, they must be a girl. Once sex drive kicks in, they realize, aha, now I understand this. It wasn't that I was a girl. I just like men like girls do, vice versa for women, girls, and, uh, and lesbians. So that's what happens in the majority of, uh, of cases. But not every single case. There is a significant group, and the studies vary, you know, a little bit in exactly uh, what their estimate is, but it's always a minority of the cases continue to want to uh, transition past puberty. So once the kids hit, you know, 12, 13, 14, and, you know, they still want to transition, chances are they are going to continue to want, uh, want that desire throughout their lives. And for them, it makes perfect sense to start thinking about uh, uh, taking steps to, uh, to physically transition. Uh, but to do that with earlier kids, there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever. This is one great big experiment. So I don't want to automatically say, you know, uh, that there's evidence to suggest uh, uh, to suggest any particular outcome. I'm pointing out that this is now an experiment. People may debate whether it's worth taking this experiment, but by denying to the parents and the actual decision makers and the kids uh, themselves what the evidence is, we're not allowing them informed consent. We are disinforming them and pretending that they're saying, yes, counts as consent. Really, most of these people are giving a, a false account of what the existing evidence is. I have no idea, and nobody can say that they have any idea what is exactly the correct course for any one individual kid. But we sure as heck aren't going to be helping any families by you know, withholding and misrepresenting the information that they need in order to make that decision. So the policy statement comes out and flatly rejects encouraging the child to identify with their biological sex, rejects watchful waiting, and instead uh, uh, embraces the, the third, which they call gender-affirming care. First of all, that term, gender affirming care, do you have any issue with that term? Uh, it, I, I hesitate to say that the term means what the term means. I mean, I'm, I'm what I have been accustomed to after having watched this debate, and of course, you know, what I was doing was the fact checking. Uh, to me, that, that is like, uh, oh, this must be true because it came from the Ministry of Truth. Uh, hang on. Just because they gave it this kind of label, does that mean that that actually is the content of what's going on or what I sense is the sales pitch here, that the other ones actually are not gender confirmation? Now, the, uh, these three labels were not actually produced by the, uh, by the AAP. The, this was not a product of their, own, uh, of their own development, of their own review. They merely adopted the terminology that was given by the uh, – uh, used to be the uh, uh, Harry Benjamin Gender Dysphoria Association or Habigda. Now it's become the uh, WPATH, and I'm not going to get the acronym right, so I don't want uh, uh, to uh, uh, insult them by getting the, the rest of their name wrong. Uh, but it was that organization, which although calls itself a professional organization and you have to have a professional degree to be a full member, really the bulk of the members are non are non professionals. They're, they're people interested uh, in the topic, you know, and many activists. And of course, I, I think it's terrific that it gathers like that. But it, by putting the word professional, but really having most of your membership and membership dollars coming from non professionals, again, to me is a bit of a uh, a bit of a bait and switch. Uh, anyway, so they are the group that uh, uh, who divided various approaches into those three. Uh, but none of the actual researchers doing any of the work uh, divided into those three. Again, this was just kind of labels that were put onto those treatment groups, you know, but to me, it's mostly salespersonship. The want and wait approach isn't strictly watch and wait. The gender affirmation isn't strictly gender affirmation, and the gender rejection or whatever they want to call it isn't necessarily gender rejection. These are just kind of advertising labels that were given in order to bias the reader pro and anti against whichever one the writer wants them to like. Yeah, I would uh, think, what, sorry, that the average person, if they heard gender affirming care, would be thinking affirming the child's biological gender. So. It appears to me that's a politically correct way of stating what the, 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 the avenue that they want to push, which is getting the child to identify with the gender that's in their head as opposed to the biological gender. 
Right. With a label like that, how could it mean – with a label like gender affirmation, how could it mean anything other than gender affirmation? Just like a lifetime guarantee, how could that mean anything other than lifetime guarantee? Just don't read the fine print. Right. So, uh, so really, the, these different uh, uh, what actually happens is that a, a person comes in, you know, with a complicated uh, set of likes and dislikes and what they want, what they don't want, parents and whatever you know kind of relationship they have with the uh, uh, with the kid in various stages of transition or non-transition, and friends who know or don't know or like them or don't like them. And what happens in any of these cases is we do the best we can with whatever is going on in the individual case. Very often, you know, just the situation or when during the progression of the development of the child, when they come into therapy, you know, very often they have already socially transitioned. So there really is no decision to be made. So it's not like anybody from any of these camps sticks to that camp or or, or will apply a, a one size fits all Uh uh, which, as I said, uh, which is really one of the basic problems with the AAP statement is that one size fits all their way. If you enjoyed that excerpt, go listen to the full episode with Dr. James Cantor on the Hidden Truth Show wherever you listen to podcasts.